Fantastic communication and energy, especially between the bassist and the guitarist. Awesome, awesome trombone solo as well, and the ending was incredibly tight. I really enjoyed it. We also had La Vida Loca in the style of Busted. Great opening, the drums coming in, the, uh, the fills were absolutely impeccable. Uh, very strong, energetic performance, and I liked the reinterpretation from CD Latin pop to some sort of something much more raucous and dark, so that was imaginative and original, I thought. Um, coming on to the soloists, Charles Yang was technically astounding. Astounding with his jaw dropping flurries. No, I mean, just if you went to see that in a professional, on a professional stage, you would not be disappointed. The way that he held that space. So mature and like that bravery of not being afraid of space. Um, Matthew Gray on the double bass, something fiendishly difficult, especially to play in the acoustics of this room, but he did it with such poise and flair and character, with little, kind of these virtuosic um, flurries and then a little cheeky grin over his shoulder, which was a joy to watch. East House! Let's have a cheer for East House! I'll make a man out of you. Fantastic storytelling in terms of the arrangement and the performance. I was utterly blown away by it. Really very impressive. The trombone quartet, I thought that was a really brave and challenging and interesting song choice and not one that I'd heard before and I loved especially the second movement, it was full of life and vitality. Hungry Like the Wolf? 
We love that, didn't we? Yeah. That got a fantastic um, communication, delicious arrangement delivered with lots of flair. Rambunctious village. Um, Clennon, Clennell, delivering the flute solo by Richard Rodney Bennett. Um, an absolutely beautiful song choice, performed with moving simplicity. I thought it was a really very beautiful performance. And then Matthew Gray playing piano was just awesomely technically impressive. In fact, all of the pianists this evening have been staggering. Moving on to another staggering pianist, Anthony Tapp, playing the wildly ambitious Rachmaninoff. And he pulled it off with not only a delicacy of touch, but with also a passionate dynamism. It's incredible what these guys have done. So can we have a special round of applause, actually? Been consistently impressed with is the communication and sensitive playing of some of the young accompanists. It's a difficult skill to be an accompanist and very different from being a frontman. Robert Holmes was no exception. Beautiful, sensitive playing, Robert. Really impressed. And with your level of communication. Okay, now we've got West House. Hit Jimmy West House! <laughs> Large ensemble, one of my all time faves. Hey Jude, great dynamics, fantastic communication with the audience. In fact, all of those large ensembles, getting everybody clapping, lifted the energy in the entire room. An energetic and fun performance. The small ensemble, Paco Bell's Canon, lovely dialogue in the middle between light and shade. Fantastic individual players playing solidly and building to a really, really strong finish. Let it go in the 80s rock style. Who was the main vocalist for that? Stephen Monk. Where are you, Stephen? You were fantastic. Really great. so many times wailed from piggy-tailed poppets around East London and you completely made it your own and you made it really cool so that was that was really impressive the arrangement was dynamic and energetic and again great communication um, Lucas playing the piano I think that was one of the most unexpected song choices and again a really really brave choice it was played with awesome technical flair start to finish. We have Ewan Miller on the oboe and I actually would like to give special commendation to Ewan Miller because he was phenomenal. <laughs> Wonderful communication. A lovely feel, sensitive play, and I'm utterly astounded that you're playing from memory. It's so rare to see an accompanist playing from memory. And then we have John Wu, who basically rules this entire house, doesn't he? They even thanked him in the programme. And you could just hear the whole room just come alive from it. I put great interplay between your finger tapping and punching and plucking and percussing. And yeah, it was just a tour de force. Vibrant, colourful language in your programme. I really felt like I got under the skin of your house much more than any of the others. Like, whereas, I don't know if you've all read it. 
But give, give this one a go. A potpourri of texture and harmonies. <laughs> so I felt like it wasn't ne- merely informative, but I understood the character and personality of your house much better through it. So you've got the highest score for that. <laughs> Schoolhouse, a wonderful topical choice which chimed in very well with your choice of programme graphic. The poppies, of course, they're all on our mind. And it's a lovely, lovely large ensemble number. Lots of great energy. Lovely large ensemble number. Lots of great energy. Small ensemble, great communication between players at points, especially in the difficult parts, like when you're coming back in, so after the rests. You're all watching each other and you've played fantastically well as a unit. You've really got that lovely, well-balanced Renaissance sound. The band who played Do I Wanna Know Can't Stop, possibly my favourite song choices of the entire evening, I have to say, and really, really great idea to combine them. Um, who is the main vocalist for that? Stanley Glendinning, is that right? You're a bit of a star. You have to take your hat off even further to Vinyat Pranin, is that right? Um, for his screaming guitar solo. We had Ollie Dewar on clarinet, and Ollie was one of the most enjoyable performances to watch for me because I loved the fact that the clarinet was almost an extension of his whole body. He was inside that music. Then we had Roy Ram playing the piano. <laughs> I've written here, down here, utterly joyful romp. <laughs> Delicious spirit. Staggering virtuosity and incredible communication. Um, next, we have James Foran with that sensational final viola solo. And what I loved about James's performance was he was virtuosically so relaxed with it, just casually brilliant, wonderfully communicative as well with his accompanist and with the audience. about with all of these soloists is their lack of fear of space. They don't, they're not afraid to just leave the pauses because for me in music space is as important as the notes that you play. Nikolai, Nikolai Lester playing for Oli Dewey. It's been such a joy and an honour and a terror for me to be watching this evening. I hate the next bit. It was really, really hard. Actually, four people, three people got full marks for their solo performances. And so many just got one mark shaved off. They were all exceptional. Um, And my mind was changed by a late runner and it was because my jaw really never left the floor and it has to go to my life. Okay, the ensemble, which is really hard because it's, it, there was so, so much diversity and how do you even judge that? And I loved, it, I especially because of my taste, loved all of the smaller ensemble numbers. But 
it's going to go to the large ensemble East House. <laughs> In fourth place is Schoolhouse. In third place is County House. Now, places one and two are extremely close. There is only, there are only two points between them. And second place is West House.
Na 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 na